cold start. Okay, it's 19 degrees. bad boy's got a 3.3 in it. They said the power steering doesn't work. Maybe you can see that. There you go. That might be a problem. They've retrofitted a smaller belt onto the darn thing to bypass that. So we're going to replace that, or at least take it off and see what happened to it, and then replace it. And then I think it needs an oil change. I think this battery said 2013 on it. Some remand battery. Yeah, 528 to 2013 scratched into it. Doesn't smell like antifreeze. So, we're gonna get underneath this bad boy. And there's our pump. And there's our shattered pulley. So, I had my hands up here and I was kind of looking at it. Looks like the shaft kind of just blew out of the pump and then it broke the pulley. So, I gotta get a pump, pulley. And I think I was able to find the, uh, the pressure line going to the rack so that'll be nice to do at the same time but I'm thinking so there's a bolt right there and then there's a bolt up here that I have to get off and that might be the two that I need there I'm not sure if there's a third one up here or not yet but we'll find out and then it looks like it would prove to be a royal pain to get out the bottom. So what I might do is try go out the top because I gotta have the intake off any. Oh, let me drop to you. As I was saying, I gotta have the intake off anyway to do all the uh, gaskets and you know the general refresh and the rear plugs and. Just do it all at the same time, it'd probably be easier. So we're gonna try that. I'll bring you back if I kinda find any tips or tricks to share. Otherwise, it's, it's a little rusty under here. It's not bad though. 
It definitely could be, it could be worse. I don't remember if I showed this yet, but they repainted it at one point and they did this really like cool speck of blue paint and they did the rims to match. This is really cool, I love this. But the whole car is like that. They went over all the plastics, did the handles and they left the chrome part. And then they did the white, or the roof in white. It's like a two-tone color. Looks real cool, I think, anyway. I'm definitely gonna keep the rims like that. This needs a paint job, like pretty bad. It needs some body work. So I might go back to the, uh, the factory blue, which is right here. But I think I'll keep the rims that color, at least for now, or I might repaint them the dark blue. But we'll see. I'm thinking about keeping the white roof, though. I do. I do like that idea. Anyway, I wanted to show that. And then it's got two new tires in the front. I think these are, yeah, dated uh, 2019, if I can find it. So it needs air. Yeah, 52, 52nd week of 19, so 2020, these were replaced in. But the rears, I, I was looking at this one anyway. This one, I think was dated 40th week of 06. So that needs to, that needs to go away. I don't know what the other side, I think the other side's different. It's a different tire, I think. Um, what do you say? 27th week of 03. <laughs> nice. Nice. Duralon. I think I found two matching Douglas, so I'll have... I'll probably put these ones in the rear, and then I'll put the two new ones up front. So. Then we'll have four matching Douglas all-season tires. I think they're only like 59 bucks. And for summer driving, they'll be just fine. I gotta replace this guy, which I have. Uh, I have one, a bezel downstairs in storage. This headlight's pretty yellowed and foggy. But this one is good, but it's the seals are bad in it. So they replaced this one with an aftermarket one, which then leaked and let moisture in. And then this bezel. I think they put some screw holes in it where there weren't any. So I'll replace this with the other one I got downstairs too. And then it's got a Plymouth grill on it. I think I'm gonna try find the Dodge one that was supposed to be on it. It was, uh, I was looking at the Carfax in 2000, I think March 29th of 2000, it was in a front end collision in this area. And I bet you they broke this, so they replaced this. They broke the grill, so they replaced it with this one. And then I believe, if you look, the inside of this fender, the fender is red underneath that paint, so they replaced that fender. And then I see some cobble work on this door here. Those look like welds. Yeah, they are. So they did some work on this door to save it. I can see the, that's all welded up. So they probably kinked the door. And then they put a panel on it or something and they welded this back together. I think the people that owned it, they did, it was an auto body shop, so they did some kind of work on it. And then this one looks like an original blue fender because when they repainted it, they had the bumper on it. So they only repainted to this line because there's the original paint underneath. I guess let's see if this fender is red. Nope. That's an original blue fender. And then, look at this. It used to be a woody. I think all, both front doors have this. And then there's some down on the passenger sliding door too. So it used to be that dark blue with the wood grain paneling all the way across. They put this black striping here around the back window. 
much. Oh, bad seal, big surprise. And a wiper blade. Missing this trim piece as they all... In fact, it was missing it before they painted it because they just painted over it. Good luck to me finding one of those. But then I gotta find a chrome bumper for the rear to replace that. It's a cool custom bumper, but I don't, I don't roll like that. Not a fan. Here's some original paint showing through here where it got dinged. So, looks like they just kind of went over it. They didn't, like, sand it down to get a good, I don't know, grab on it so it kind of chipped like that. Not that I would have sanded it down either, but I think that's the proper way to do it. Allegedly. So I've heard. seats tore. That one's like they're all sun faded real bad. I wonder if I can find like a I know they make some chemicals that you can put over like plastics that will bring the color back a little bit. See if I can find some. Otherwise I, it might just a lot of this just might be dust. And this might come back around a little bit. Needs a new buckle there. That buckle it works. It clicks in but it's the plastic is there's more to be desired there. And then I believe there's, what is that? Is it six or seven? I think there's seven rims back there. And they're all 14s that I think fit this. So I don't know if they were off of this or another vehicle or what, but they were, they came with it. Actually, I'm kind of curious what the date codes on these are. But I figure, yeah, it looks like, so there's a matching set of these red ones. So there's one right here, one there, this one. And that's, that's that's four of those, and then there's this. This is a not matching one, I don't think. Yeah. So this one and that one go together, and then that's just some oddball. What I was figuring is I'd have a second set of tires at least. At least a second set of rims. So far, any of these ones that are on it right now turn out to be bent. I can work with these instead. I don't mind the pattern on these either, but I don't know, let's look, see if we can find any. What is, what is this? 205.70. So these are size up. And I'm looking for a date code. Wheel weight was painted with the rim. So that wheel weight's been on there a while. I'm not, I'm not seeing a DOT code on this side. Ace mark. Here's a DOT. Oh, it's a three. Yeah, this is old. So 17th weekend, nine, I think is what that means. And nine would be the last digit of the year. So, the wind just shut the driver door. I mean, it could be 99, could be 89. If it was 89, these, no, because they couldn't be real. It wasn't the real size. They're probably nine. It's probably 99. Let's get this, like, zigzag, wintry tread. And then that one's a pace mark, too. Are they, this one's a, not a pace mark. So these two were the same, or at least done at the same time. So this one's probably a similar story. Come on. Don't you go. Ooh, drunk shock. Probably doesn't work. Seventeenth week of nine. So same same story there. And this one's a BF Goodrich. What are you? Date code's probably on the inside too. I don't see it. Let's see if I can turn this over. This one's blowed up. Um, I see 512, so 50 first week of two. And they switched the date codes about 2000, so the newest this could be is 92. That's ancient. And then. We've got this Roadrunner, 
which is flipped over for me, and it says 38th week of 7, so 97 probably. Big old wheel weight on it. And then we've got this all climate radial. I thought it's it's a, yeah that's a no name tire. Nope. Ensign. Uh, kind of DOT code we have here. Is that one on the outside here? Oh yeah. Uh, 16th week of 07. So this one's a little newer. You know, to be fair, it's not dry rotted. I mean, it, oh, but but it's um, blown up right there. But it doesn't have like the big crack. I'm sure it would crack immediately if you took air to it. But it doesn't look cracked right now. It's just wore out. Oh, there's, yeah, there's some right there. There it is. And then we've got Epic Tour Radio. What are these, 185, 70, 14s? And they've got the same wheel weights on them. Style, anyway. Um, what do you got for a DOT code? Epic Tour. Um, it's got some really, like, super 3d badges um i don't even see a dot code on it unless is is that it right there 20th week of 08 yeah it's probably i think that's it right next to the dot yeah 20th week of 08 and then we've got another 185 this one is a cooper trend setter SE special edition. Ooh. And this one is I'm looking, I'm looking, I don't see it. It's gotta be here somewhere. Made in the USA. Blah 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 blah. Tubeless radio. I must be blind. load 35 psi oh that's like a oh that's kind of weird that's a low i guess for 14s maybe that's normal i don't know uh, oh here it is it was on the front side the whole time uh, 21th week of 2000 says 2100 20 21th <laughs> 21st week of 2000 Anyway, I got stuck with a bunch of rims, so that's cool. I was hauling wood at some point. I gotta figure out how this door... I wonder if he disconnected the lock completely or if it's just stuck or or what, but... This has been off and it's got a funny bolt. That's broke. That's almost as plastic as cracked. That's cracked. And it's going to take me a million years to find good plastic. And then it'll crack when I'm taking it off. That's cracked. Yeah. I believe that that piece is unclipped up there, that wood grain. Um, headliner's down. So I was thinking, I see, I saw this on the uh, on a Chrysler forums post, like Chrysler Minivan forums, if you're, any of you are familiar with that um, website. Great website. Lots of good information. Somebody did their headliner like with a like really cool um, what's the word? What's the word am I looking for? Um, like a plaid. Um, yeah, plaid. They did like a really cool plaid pattern. So what I'm thinking is they'll do like that blue pattern on this too. I think I'm going to do the same thing they did because I really liked how it looked. So you get like a blue plaid uh, um, fabric here and you just kind of glue it in. Because the actual headliner itself is good. It's just the fabric or the foam 
kind of disintegrated, which left the glue loose, and then the fabric came down. But also, it's not tore. Well, it's got the tear right there, but it'll be fine for now. It's not like it's hanging in your face. At least not mine. Yeah. We have anything in here? Uh oh, the clips for the carpet. That one's broke, but to where the seats go. And this side's got two cup holders. Oh, and it's the trim is out. I suppose there's no screws in. Hopefully they didn't all No, they're not broke. There's just no screws in it, so that's been off. That piece is broke, which sucks because I had a good one that I broke at the scrapyard. Dang it. Carpet's all pulled up. It, the carpet's not too bad. It's stained. But all, like, the fabric is still all here. I think I can bring this back a little bit. I'll, I'll try shampoo it. Yeah. Not bad. So I'm going to get back to staring at this power steering pump. I've been procrastinating. Let's see. This motor on this power it works on this power seat, but it's kind of drag, so I just kind of help it with my feet. I'm pushing it, and it goes back. It also sticks forward, so when I went to do this, every time I come back in here, and it's all stuck all the way forward. And then we're missing these two for the, I think, lumbar and the, like, the seat going back and forth. And then this one's a manual seat. And it's got the full-size box. I think what I'd like to do is find the one that... I'd like to find the lower console here that doesn't go all the way to the floor. I mean, this is... Okay, it's cool, but I would never use it. I don't think. So you get the one that's got your extra foot room. And then you can maybe put, like, a cup holder or, like, a aftermarket tray or whatever you'd like to do. Then i got to find floor mats. Surprisingly, the carpet's not, like, wore out down here. Not completely. Like, and the pedal's, pedal's not even that war for that much mileage. Which, if I remember looking at the records, I think, what, the first 225,000 were put on it by 05. And then the guy, the family that I bought it from had it since then, probably. And they only put, like, what, 50,000 on it. That's what the guy was saying. He only got in it and drove it, what, five miles one way and five miles the other way. Which... So is that fuel gauge empty or is it just... Okay, it's just where it's sat. I was going to say, I filled it up. I didn't think it drank that much fuel. But he said they only drove it like five miles a day one way and then five miles back, which is probably why they took this when this pump blew up. They just put this smaller belt on it, which this is a great idea. I mean, it's loose as heck, but I think this was an absolutely great idea. They were able to make it work with the air conditioning belt your water pump, you know, and all that stuff. And they bypass the pump. So, they definitely knew how to do some stuff. I mean, but they definitely knew how to work on things. They had some really cool cars out front. But they knew how to make it work, that's for sure. But, yeah. So, we're going to take this off and we're going to do the plenum gasket. We're going to clean the throttle body, the MAF sensor, everything in here. Replace the PCV valve and the hose and everything. It's all rock hard and then we'll do probably do the line going down from the reservoir to the power steering pump when that's off but we're going to take this bracket off take the alternator off and we're going to pull the pump out the top that looks like the easiest way to remove it and then while this is all off we'll do the rear plugs we're going to do the front plugs thermostat gasket which this bolt breaks every single time on the lower intake and it looks like they've been in here and they did it and they replaced it with what looks like a stud and a nut so the nut should spin off the stud, I would hope. So, and then not break, you know, because bolts. I think that was that was probably a good idea what they did there. Hopefully they put like an anti-seize on it. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put the recall, the Mopar. They, these uh, fuel rails here like to leak right here because inside of here, this coupler, there's an O-ring in here. So this thing, when you pull the rail off, it can swivel on this joint. But this O-ring wears out, and it leaks right under the exhaust, catches fire, and burns the whole thing to the ground. As you can see, I think it already did catch fire once. 
and I was looking at it. It wasn't leaking when I was watching it, but you can see it's damp here. And I don't know if this is oil splash or fuel on it. I think this is probably oil, but as soon as I touch this, this is going to start leaking. They make a the recall by like the official service bulletin from Opar was they have a little clamp with a rubber seal that just goes right over top of this. I, it was recommended. I think I read this in the Chrysler forums too, or somewhere, I read it somewhere, that you put a little bit of seal all on here first and clean it up, put some seal all over it, and then crimp it down. Um, I've also seen and performed it once. You cut this piece off and you thread this on both sides and you put, there's a special like 90 degree brass fitting you put on either side and you put a section of high pressure hose, but make sure you gotta, you gotta wrap this super tight with a, uh, I use some like pipe sealer and then like some fuel grade pipe sealer and sealant and then I put the tap in so it was sealed like extra sealed on top of the threads and then and then crimped it down and it hasn't leaked that was on my 93 which has this rail with the return and the fuel pressure regulator I don't recommend trying it yourself do that at your own risk if it's worked for me so far but unlike the gen 3s um, from 96 to 2000 they don't have a return system on them Instead, it just comes in, and they leak the same way, too. It's designed the same, except they just don't have this piece. It just it dead ends here. And I'm sure what you could do is you could just cap off this return. You could put one of those on, but you could also get the... They changed the design in, like, 99, where instead of it going like this, it goes in and splits down here. And it's not a like a... I don't know, the metal hose with an o-ring in it it's like a little flex corner so you can kind of just tweak it and that eliminates it being by the exhaust and it eliminates the leak and i've i've retrofitted uh i think it was a 97 that had the old rail with the new rail and it's it's all plug and play down here on the lines if you can get those clips off and then these lines need to be replaced so i always i just what i take to do is a cutting wheel and i cut this off and then i can pull the line off and then you still got the the flare on the end here you put your new high pressure line on it with a high pressure fitting i don't i haven't used the crimp on ones i use the there's some screw in ones some nice high pressure screw in ones at harbor freight and those seem to work and i do that on both sides that way you can keep the the part of the line here that clips in does this one clip in and nope it's just solid lines so the third gen ones are they have a, a fuel line clip down here on both sides and so these ones will just looks like you just grind that off and slide new ones on So we're gonna do all that work. Valve cover gaskets, well you got the intake off, you, you might as well. Do the lower intake valley gasket. Hopefully we don't break any of these. They shouldn't break, but I found a I found a van. My 97, it's a Caravan LE, a short wheelbase. Actually, yeah, yeah, it is a Caravan, it's not, it's Dodge. Um, some guy, the guy managed to break the one off over here, and the one off over here. And he had kind of just slapped them in there, and it would, uh, believe it or not, leak coolant over here. So I had to, I had to put helicoils on that, and I got that, and that fixed it. But they shouldn't break. The only bolt that I've ever broke is this one on the thermostat, because on the bottom the threads are exposed on the side, so it rusts in place. But we shouldn't have to worry about that because they put a, they put a nut on it for me. So I kind of, I kind of like that idea. Otherwise, just anti sees and he sees the piss out of it. Um, what's funny is I can I can spin the the belt is so loose I can spin the tensioner pulley by hand, <laughs> and under it squeals. <laughs> yeah, but I I ordered all the parts. Um, I think between O'Reilly's Advance and AutoZone, AutoZone had all of the power steering. They had the pump, the pulley, and the high pressure hose in stock up in northern Minneapolis and then O'Reilly's had all my gaskets and Advance had the plugs that fit this uh so between the three I was able to find all the parts the same day otherwise if I couldn't find anything I'd just go on Rock Auto and have it shipped in that week so it's not bad um I want to take this plastic cover off because I see a bungee cord down there and it is just so caked and I want to see if it's the front main that's leaking or if this is just residue from the power steering or oil dripping down and probably a combination of all three and like valve cover gaskets dripping down because I'm not going to do the oil pan gasket yet and I'm not going to do like the tensioner or the idler or everything I think what I'll do is I'll end up putting a timing chain in it after I drive it on it seems fine right now so I'm not worried about it and I've definitely had them with higher miles and 
them be okay as far as I'm aware. And I, I bet you it's been done. And if it hasn't, it, a couple more miles ain't going to hurt. And if it does, uh, so be it. But I'll, I want at least want to look and see if it's the front main leaking. Because if it's leaking badly, I might just pull the crank pulley off and just slap a front main in it so it doesn't leak until I can get to doing the timing chain. So I'm going to pull this cover off and I'll bring you back and I'll show you that. Because we're once again procrastinating the, that down there. <laughs> Okay, so it was just four of those 3 8 screws, two of them up here, one down here on the front, and then one on the back side. Like here, here, there, there. Um, yeah, so we got a free bungee cord, and so my guess is that the power steering started leaking because the shaft started, you know, moving back and forth because it had play in it. And I bet you they kept filling it and adding to it until it catastrophically blew apart, and so they bypassed it. But, uh, yeah. So while this kind of catch pan did its job, I mean, actually I think it's to protect shit from getting up in the pulleys and stuff, but... And there's part of the shredded belt, I bet. You know. Lots of dirt and debris and oil and... Yeah, we'll clean this off before we put it back in. But yeah, look at that. And this is some fresh stuff here. Probably from when I filled the reservoir for the power steering to see if it would work if it was just low and had a leak. But let's get up under here. Let's see what we're looking at. I'm gonna put these screws into there so they don't rust. So, um. Eh, crank front main's probably leaking a little bit. But, yeah, I'd be willing to bet most of it's from that pump. Look at it all just everywhere. And it got on the crank pulley and just started splattering. But it looks like most of it, yeah, is up around the, the power steering pump, which is right here. Maybe I can get this uh, pulley out now. I couldn't get it out the other way. Maybe. Kind of. See, it's kind of stuck on the lip. But if you look, it was just completely blown apart. So yeah, it's kind of stuck here. Like I can't get it out. So, I don't know, we're just gonna... There, right, good as new, fixed it, guys. Yeah, that's... I would say that's a problem. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah, here's the fresh stuff I put in it. Kind of just drained out of it. Water pump's been done at least once. I think this this might be either we just got oil flying everywhere here, and it when I heated it up, it kind of dripped, or the water pump's leaking. Oh, At least this one's on the bottom, and this one's easy to do, easy to get at. On the newer uh, caravans with the three threes, it's kind of pushed up here, and you got to raise and lower the motor, and then you break one of these bolts off, and you got to try to drill it out, and then you just take the old timing cover off and just do it in the, on the bench because, uh, yeah, that's that's the chain of events there. Ask me how I know. Um, I would say that that's probably weeping. And if not, it will be soon. So they, the, the idler doesn't even do anything. It's like bypassed. It's a little, a little loud. It doesn't have play in it. A little loud. Um, tension I can spin by hand, sort of. It's just barely touching it. So you, the tensioner, what is that tensioner? Maxed out then, so it's probably shot. Um... 
trying to think here. So, to do the timing, do this, get this off, you might as well do the timing cover. You're doing the timing cover, you get the chain, get that all resealed. And then you do your oil pan gas, because you gotta have your oil pan off to do the timing cover. And then you do your front main seal, and then you put a new idler, and your tensioner, and your serpentine belt, and then this is all refreshed. And then you get a new power steering pump with new, well the only pulley that I haven't, wouldn't have touched here, would be this guy up in your AC, which is free. And there's a sticker up there that says it was retrofitted for 134A in 09, so that's good to know. Um, great. How much do I want to dig into this today? I think at the very least, this needs to be addressed. But like I said, you get this off, and then you might as well do the timing cover. And this one's not bad to get at. Like, there is so much space in here compared to even a third gen. You had to mess with the motor mount and you have to jack the motor up and whatever. But this one, this one looks more feasible. I might go price this guy and then I'll go price timing cover gasket and the chain and the tensioner and the well, idler and the tensioner. And I was already buying the serpentine belt to hook the wall up. Our steering pump back up. Be easier just do it at once, right, guys? Right? Yeah. I think it's supposed to snow today. Yeah, I'm gonna go price this stuff. We'll we'll see about it. Anyway, got the axis cover off, so we did something useful. I'm looking at the rubber on the uh, on the CV axles. It looks pretty good. Not bad at all. A little dry cracking, but not bad. It's not gonna blow apart, I don't think. And the brakes look like they've got some material left. Probably should grease the ball joints. Um, where are the tie rod ends up here? I don't feel any play in them. Are these greasable? No, that one's not greasable. Uh, I haven't driven it down the road enough to feel if this strut's got any life in it, but always at least on these caravans i've read that you want to keep these factory like oem springs they're a lot better than the cheap ones and then you just replace the the strut or the uh shock um, those can be fun to do you got to have the spring compressor tool and you got to be careful so you don't blow your head off and yeah all right cool all right i'm gonna go price this stuff okay yeah so I was able to get the rest of the parts, so timing chain, front main seal, timing cover gasket, valve, or um, oil pan gasket. So we're going to go ahead and all the tensioner and idler, we're going to go ahead and do that. So I think the tensioner was literally maxed out, so if I like tried to like undo the tensioner, if you will, the right way, it would actually tension this belt the way they've got it run. And I, uh, I couldn't be bothered with this old belt, so I snipped it. So there we go. So we got that off. So what do we want to start taking apart to make room? Probably just go right onto that idler pulley. And so we'll get him out of the way. And then we'll pull the water pump pulley. But we'll leave the water pump on. I want to take that off while it's, you know, while I got the whole timing cover off on the bench. It will uh, hopefully make it easier to not break any bolts on it. And then we'll pull, we'll see if we can pull the tension. Now, before I pull the tension, we're gonna pull this bracket off and then pull the alternator out. And then I think we'll put the motor on a jack and we'll remove the motor mount. And then we will be able to get at the timing cover to remove all of the timing cover bolts to pull the cover off. And then when we get the timing cover off, we'll get at the power steering pump and do all this. And yeah, we're doing a full, full refresh on this now. Weird how that happens. All right, I'll bring you back in in a bit here. Tensioner's out. That's just one 15 millimeter bolt. Came right off with a three ace. Um, it says made in Canada on this, so this might be a OEM. I'm gonna hang on to this because it's not bad. It just made a little bit of grinding noise. But like I said, I'm going to replace it while I'm in here. But we'll hang on to this as a spare in case the, the new 
aftermarket one. Uh, it doesn't do me so good, but what I was noticing or when I was part look pricing, um, there's two different styles. So there's up until March 1st of 90 and then before March 1st of 90. So they made a design change. So hopefully the one I get is the right diameter here. Well, we'll find out one way or another. If I get the wrong one, uh, we might just run this one because that was that's really easy to do. So I'm going to set him off to the side. Yeah, and we're going to crack that those pulley bolts. I think those are 13s. We'll see. Um, so this is kind of hard to do while you're spinning here. So sometimes you can get a screwdriver on two bolts and pry. Um, sometimes you get just get two wrenches on them. But we'll we'll see how this goes here. I just might have to manhandle the pump. But look at this play. That's not good. So I'm not just firing the parts cannon here. Not for all of it. Like that needs to be addressed. And then the reason you buy it, you get your tension and your idler replaced. So, you know, they're one, they're world. We just realized that or figured out that idler is probably OEM. Um, you'll end up with premature belt wear if you don't replace that guy. Allegedly. Yeah, look at that. Nice. And I assume that, yeah, well, we know this has been done once. Well, I can see it kind of wobble. Yeah. Nice. Surprised I didn't see that before. AC spins, spins real nice, though. And I know the clutch is free, so... I wonder if this works. I don't know. I never tried it. So, all right. We're going to get the water pump pulley off. All right. So, yep. There are 13s for the water pump pulley. I took this bolt, and I ran that bolt in. There's so when I, like, crank to loosen. Hopefully. Yeah. Look at that. Crank that one loose. That's definitely what the factory bulletin says to do when we're doing water pump work though they weren't even on that tight honestly that was not bad at all um, just make sure you're careful of that line right there i don't know is that is that ac i don't know what that is anyway these are spinning right off by hand now so one Two, and three. Okay, pulley looks good. We'll throw all the bolts in there so we don't lose them. Yeah, look at that. You know, to be fair, it doesn't look like it was weeping. This just might be the oil being thrown around by the crank. I don't know how much play that's supposed to have, but it's got some. Yeah, that's bad. So then it's just five bolts here. This one right up here is the one that gets, I believe that's the one that I broke on my 98 and my dad broke on the 05. But it could have been this one too. It was one of these two out here, the ones that are exposed on both sides. Because you get crap here and it corrodes the bolt and seizes it to the housing anyway so after that i think it's the motor mount i think we'll get the motor mount off then i'll look at that motor mount great another thing that can get done after that's not a big deal i'm not gonna worry about that i'm just gonna take it off and send it um yeah and then it's i don't even think the tensioner has to come off for the timing cover i think that's separate but See if we can get him off anyway, because he's got to come off. And I think the bolts are on the back side, if I remember. And you can get a really good view at that. That is just carnage right there. And I know, like, I could pull that shaft all the way out and smash it into the frame rail. <laughs> nice. Yeah, this was all all leaking. I believe the bullet um, service record, the one from 05 at one of the stores they took it to, said all this stuff was leaking before, and then, obviously, I don't think anybody touched it since. Well, they could have. I mean, it's, it's a blue... I don't know. I don't think that's factor. It's an old blue Felpro, probably. Which is what I'm going to put back on it, but... 
and then this is running I noticed this they recommend a smaller oil filter I think it's a 51348 which I think is what my neon takes but I'm gonna put the the newer style 51085 that they put on all the newer ones I think that'll clear everything here if it doesn't we'll we'll revisit oh that line is up here coolant lines getting a little iffy looking uh, we're gonna have to drain the coolant yay Okay. This hose looks okay. I wonder if it's been replaced. It doesn't look all dry rotted. Okay. I will do the motor mount and okay, bring you back. Game plan. So, normally I'd put like a block of wood and then put the jack in the oil pan to hold it up, but uh, we need to have the oil pan off to do all this. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the reservoir for the power steering off, pull this bracket off, get the alternator out of the way, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the chain, I'm going to put a chain locked into this bolt hole here and then I'll take my engine hoist and I'll hold the engine up from here and we'll do this part of the refresh first and then I put the motor mount back on and then we can do this part so that's what I'm going to do and I got to go get my motor stand out of storage Ugh, great great right. okay so a guy went all the way out to his storage unit to get his motor stand out but uh wasn't there so I was so graciously reminded that I didn't actually put it there I had the like the stand in there which is what I thought I was the motor hoist but instead my door latches for my my shed here here sits the 2005 All right, blinded you there. Back in here, some other goodies. Sits the O2, town of country. And there she sits, right there, with a motor on it, on a pallet. Now, how do you think I get this guy out? I forgot about this. Um, this is a, I want to say it's out of a 92 or a 93 Grand Caravan. Um, it's got 111,000 miles on it. It's got transmission and everything. I bought it because um, I needed the, I, I wanted to have a spare transmission because my 93, the reverse doesn't work. You know what I just realized? This has got a pump on it. Uh... This one's got a little bit of play in it, too. Not bad, though. Um, well, hey, I can look here, and I can see what I need to unbolt this pump, right? Oh, that's that's annoying. I had a pump here. <laughs> see, I forget some things. Um, but, yeah, I bought this because I, I wanted to have a spare transmission because my 93 doesn't have reverse. I wanted to have one on hand and ready in case, or when, the, if and when the rest of the transmission went, which it hasn't yet. So, I've kind of sad. I've robbed a few parts off it. Here's the broken bits of the vacuum harness. I took some ends off of that. Um, let's get this guy out of the way. I'm breaking it. Front cowl for I think that's for the 05. Spare tire. Busted ass rake. Was looking for this flat nose shovel too. Guys, put your stuff away properly so you know where it is. Oh, that's stuck in the ground. Oh, that's full of water that's froze. There it, is. There it goes. Oh, stuff everywhere. Um, I want to bring that out when I get this out. But yeah, I was looking for that. Um, plug wire. Set him down there. But, here, we'll take these. I don't want to, like, destroy these vacuum lines any more than they already are. Kind of use them just for patches and stuff. But, I took the thermostat housing off and I dropped one of the bolts. This one I was able to get out. This is that bolt I'm talking about that breaks. This one didn't break. Um, but I needed that housing... I think I needed the one hose that comes off of it. Um, 
I grabbed a few intake bolts off of it. But the exhaust over here, the manifolds are in good shape. It's got a new O2 sensor in it. This looks like a newer tensioner. So I had a tensioner. That idler shot, I can I can wiggle that back and forth. That that guy's no good. But yeah. Um Yeah, I don't think that's that good either. I, I can, you can hear it, but I've got one. So here I got all the bolts. So it looks like it's got, here, you line this up. You got one bolt there, you got one bolt there, and then you've got one bolt down in the bottom, and then you've got one in the back. So what is it, four bolts? Well, good. I guess I got a model here. And then a brand new serpentine belt. Pretty much brand new. Look at that. Dang it, guys. There was some cost savings here. I shouldn't have just fired the parts cannon. Dang it. Oh, what do you do? What do you do? Micro V, Gates belt. And I, I filled these cylinders full of a... Uh, was it... It wasn't ATF, but I, th I think I filled them... Some sort of fogging penetrant oil so they wouldn't seize up, put the plugs all back in them. I think these plugs, they're champions. I wouldn't want those anyway. Um, I guess I got parts here if I need them. More parts. But my goal here is I'm going to back the two vans out of here. Well, back the one, drive the one out forward. Get this guy. It's it's not so it's, it's not sitting on the stand. It's just kind of loose there. It's just sitting on this pallet. We need to get this pallet on the ground so I can get the stand out and then we'll slide the motor back into the corner here. We'll tarp back over it. Well, yeah, yep, that's what we'll do. And, yeah. Okay, well, I guess I'm here, right? So let's look. So this comes off. So I don't have to get the tensioner out to do the timing belt. It's got a little bit of play to it, too. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not that worried about it. That, you need, need this if I end up using this motor anyway, probably. Um, this, this... This hose is rock hard, geez. So I gotta get this bracket off. This is part of the whole motor mount. So the motor mount's got a bolt here. I think the one is actually, it's a different design on the older one. There's a bolt here, bolt here, bolt here, bolt there. So I gotta take these two and these two. This comes out, then I can get access to this plate here, this mounting plate, get this mounting plate out. And then I think I got access to all the bolt holes. And then I gotta take the oil pan off. But yeah, um, dang it, dang it, guys. Yeah, but it's 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 a low mile motor. That's just why, I, virtually also why I grabbed both of them. But I, like I said, I need a transmission. Easier to take them both, and the price wasn't that bad. I think it was like what a buck fifty. So I'm gonna start this mess. <laughs> so cold start, anybody? The tripping. And hitting the door on things um let's see if this one knocks and start up today it's got a pretty war bearing oh oh not really it wasn't clanky today it usually is when it sits but I, I had it running uh like i had it running last week i was out here looking for I had it running Friday because I was here looking for my uh, trailer wire harness adapter. So, it was running recently. So, we got that one running. Then we got a start. Alright, cold start on the 05. Get my hands out of the way. They're both live. So, let's get these bad boys out of here. Get my door open. Get my other door out of the ice. That should be enough to get it out. All right, I'm gonna pull these out and I'm gonna deal with this mess. Ta-da. 
it's a uh, balancing on a spare tire it's sturdy enough it ain't going anywhere as far as I'm concerned so yeah that sucked all right guys so this is what I ended up with these guys are curious that's Leo and this is honey um, so we've got Velpro valve cover gasket, timing cover gasket. Oh, this is the oil pan, valve cover timing. Obviously our TV, throttle body gasket. We got auto light plugs, lots of carb cleaner and PV blaster. Here's all the electrical. There were some wires that um, definitely need to be addressed. So I got 14, 16 gauge wire, new crimper tape, the plastic tubing. And then we got some vacuum hoses and then various other hoses for PCV and fuel line. Uh, there's a couple here. There's some high pressure fuel line in here and a bunch of, bunch of stuff. Then we've got obviously oil and filter and then a couple rags. Um, I think those are the O-rings for the yeah, O-rings for fuel injectors. Then we got our new belt and then we've got tensioner idler new water pump water pump pulley because our pulley got blown apart i will need to go take the bolt off of the other motor because i think the bolt that was in mine is gone maybe we'll see i'll look around for it high pressure hose return hose there's a water pump back there and then here's the upper and lower intake gaskets yeah so that's pretty much a full kind of engine reseal because we've got yeah, there's our front main and a couple other timing cover related gaskets. I think this O-ring is for the water pump, which this came with one, so I'll save that. I don't remember what these are for. They might be, uh, yeah, there's a couple, like, passages on the, on the cover, I think. That might be for that. Or they might be for the oil pump. Yeah, so. We'll, we'll definitely get into this. Anyway, here's all the numbers, if any of you are curious. Most of this stuff is the same for all the 3.3s, at least up until about 2,000. The newer 3.3s have captive um, valve covers, so the screws like stay with the cover, so they change the gasket type for that. And they're a lot thicker than this. These are thin. And then they do make a better pulley kit that is double-sided, like the it's a double-sided V-belt. I didn't go with that upgrade kit, one, because I don't think they had it available, at least the same day, and two, because I just don't feel like converting everything, so we're going to stick with this guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then we got the two new tires to replace the really old ones here. I got matching Douglas ones. These are what, 33rd week of 22, so they'll be good. I'll put these on the front, and I'll put the ones that are on the front in the back.